<laughs> hey guys, Alec Pierce. Scuba detectives, we're just having a little laugh here, Kevin and I. Well, uh, to be honest, I'm laughing at Kevin. But anyway, uh, <laughs> good talking to you again. And once again, we're dealing with a topic that one of you introduced, and it's great. Keep, you know, see, as you look at these videos and you see something that looks kind of weird, speak up, say something. Because a lot of our, a lot, a lot of the topics we deal with here, they're not the usual topic. I mean, anybody can say, we got a new flashlight that we want to show you, which is really bright and good for diving. I, I'm not into that, you know, not usually. Uh, I like to do weird things, yeah. Not that I'm weird. Anyway, this is a weird one, okay? <laughs> so one of, you, one of you fellows, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. The other day, he sent a comment, he said, when I'm diving with my buddy and he has a J-valve on his tank, every time he breathes in, the SPG needle drops. Every time. <sighs> What's with that? Is something wrong with this regulator or his SBG? And I, I sent an answer back and explained what's happening. But I thought, hey, that's a good idea. Maybe other people are interested. Maybe somebody else has noticed that and they're interested. So a couple of things. First of all, it isn't restricted to J valves. It's most common on J valves, most commonly. But it isn't just J. That same, uh, that same uh, effect can be seen even if it's not a J valve. Let me explain. So what's happening is you need to remember the first stage, this part down here of the regulator, all it does is supply, it just has a little, it's like a tank, it's like a gas tank, it has a little supply of air uh, at, at intermediate pressure, IP it's called, 150 psi roughly, it can be different, vary, but roughly 150 psi. So it's a reservoir, a gas tank of air sitting on that first stage. Now, if you take, pick up the second stage and you take a breath, okay, the air that's in that first stage that's sitting there waiting for you to take a breath and all through this hose right up to here comes out into your mouth. Good move, right? That's what scuba diving is all about. Anyway, that air has to come from somewhere. Where does it come from? It comes from that gas tank. It comes from that reservoir that's sitting there in the hose and the first stage. Now, things don't happen instantaneously. They happen very quickly, but not instantaneously. So you take a breath, oh, that feels good. And the air supply, the IP drops. It drops from 150 down, I don't know, 20, 30 PSI. And then you know, the first stage recognizes that the IP has dropped. The first stage says, we've got to get some more air into the gas tank. So then the first stage valve opens. And if you know anything about how valves work, you understand this, I can explain it. But the first stage valve opens and lets more air from the tank at 3,000 PSI, we'll assume, into the gas tank. Fills the first stage back up to 150 and the hose and everything else. Well, it takes a little bit of time. It takes a couple of, a second or two for that whole process to happen. And while that's happening, the SPG, the pressure gauge, which is connected to the first stage and which measures that IP, drops a little bit. Yeah. That's all there is to it. It's just that simple. Now, if you have a modern regulator, it can be more noticeable or less noticeable. Let me explain. In a modern regulator, the SPG has some built-in safety features. Where it connects to the first stage, where the hose connects, if you have, take a look at the end of an SPG, high pressure hose, you'll see that the, the hole is really small. It's, you can barely see the hole. It's really minute. You can, yeah, Kevin will put a picture on there. You can't barely see the hole. The hole on the end of a regulator of your second stage is a big hole because you want the air to flow through. But the hole at the end of a high pressure hose, the SPG, it was very, very small. Small for, for a good reason. If the hose breaks, the air doesn't come pouring out because it's a tiny hole. It's like one of those annoying little wee tiny leaks in a, in a, in a car tire, you know? you know? You know it's leaking because every three days you have to pump it up, but it's not much of a leak. Same idea, roughly. Anyway, and also built in here at the bottom of the pressure gauge itself. There's another very tiny, tiny hole. So there's two safety features built into an SPG. What's that got to do with anything? Well, the problem is that those safety features, those tiny, tiny holes, can exaggerate the change. When the pressure drops in the first stage below 150, hasn't built back up yet, the SPG can drop. And because of those tiny holes, it takes a little while for the air to get back up to bring it back up to pressure. It takes a few seconds. However, in a modern regulator, 
a very, very good regulator, shall we say, with all the features. Uh, large orifices, a fully balanced first stage, venturis, and so on. That actually lessens the likelihood. So as I say, a modern regulator, because of those safety features, exaggerate the effect. At the same time, a modern regulator takes care of some of those problems at the same time as one of those dichotomies is good and bad. Let me see if I can duplicate this problem. Here we go. We have a tank here. It's not completely full. It's only at a thousand PSI. In fact, if I go to the pressure gauge, which is on this side, Kevin, that was the depth gauge. Why didn't you mention that to me? I can't see that. <laughs> can't see that. For here's the pressure. You can see that we have about a thousand PSI in this tank. Now, this tank also has a J valve on it. And I put this J valve on here for a very good reason because I wanted to, you can see the rod, I'm going to take the rod off. It's just a darn nuisance. You can, I put that on there for a very good reason because the original comment was from a chap who had a diver, a dive buddy with a J valve. So now I'm going to take a breath of air and you, you watch if you can, Kevin, zoom in to the, uh, to the pressure gauge if you would. And I'm going to, you'll hear the breath of air in the background. Allie takes a big breath of air and watch what happens to the gauge. See it go down. It went down from a thousand to almost, let me get that straight in the camera there. Look at that. It dropped from a thousand almost down to 500. Now watch again. Watch how slowly it comes back up. See, it doesn't, it doesn't bounce back up. In the old days, <laughs> long before we had all these fancy features, safety features, when you put your, uh, put your uh, regulator on, and if it had an SPG, we didn't have them for a long time. But when you had an SPG, it had that big hole. You turn the tank on, boom, the needle jumped right up. Not anymore. So that's what happens there. Now, watch what happens. I'm going to turn the J-valve down. Okay? So with the J-valve down, the spring loaded reserve, that's what a J-valve is, it's a spring-loaded reserve, no longer functions. Let's try that again, Kevin. Same thing. Okay, here we go. You ready? I'm going to take a big breath. Uh, ready? Let me get that straight. It drops a little wee wee bit. You see it? Not so much. Because there is no spring-loaded reserve. A spring-loaded reserve is exactly what its name implies. There's a valve in there. It's like a, like a door. It's like a self-closing door. That's what it is. It's a door with a spring on it. Yeah. <laughs> and if you go to go through the door, you got to push against the spring. It's hard to get through. Just like a spring-loaded reserve. It's hard to get through. It's as if there's somebody holding the door closed. You can't get through. The air can't get through. Now, with a scuba tank, once the air pressure drops, you can't get the, any air through at all. It's as if somebody really big, maybe someone like Kevin is pushing on the door. No way you're going to get through that door. So what do you do? Well, on the reserve, you pull the lever down, which pulls the spring, the valve out of the way, and the air goes through. It'd be the same as if I kicked the door open, <laughs> pushed Kevin out of the way, and then blocked it open. You get the idea. Spring-loaded reserve. There's a spring that holds the air back from coming through until you pull the lever down. And that's exactly what's happening. Now, how can that happen with a modern regulator? How can that happen with a regulator that uh, on a tank that does not have a J-valve? Well, let me show you. Let's pretend I got the reserve down. So this effectively is no longer a J-valve. It's no longer a reserve valve. It's a standard K or standard on-off valve. Okay? And now, same thing. Take a peek there, if you would, Kevin, at the gauge. And I'm going to take a big breath of air. And let's see what happens to that needle. Huh? What's going on? This is a standard valve. The J-Rod, you know, put it on a regular tank. You do this on your own scuba tank. Put your regulator on a scuba tank, okay? And then... Don't open the valve all the way. Open the valve just a little bit, just enough to make the needle of the pressure gauge come up to the tank pressure. That's all. Don't go any farther. Okay. And then take a big breath. Now what's happening now, what's happening now is very simple. When you take a breath, you take the air out of the first stage, out of the hose, all the high pressure air is gone. The needle drops, but the tank valve isn't open all the way. So air doesn't come through very quickly. It drops, 
and doesn't come back up very quickly. So, so as I mentioned, I think in my reply to the comment, to thank you very much for that comment, I'm sorry I forget your name, when I mentioned the reply, I explained about the J-Rod, but then I also said, make sure that your buddy's tank valve is wide open, all the way open. And by the way, if you go back in our old videos, you will see we had a discussion about the fact that you do not turn the tank valve back a quarter turn in the old days. And please, I started diving in 1958. In the old days, for a variety of mechanical, physical reasons, we would open the valve all the way and then turn it back a little bit. Those reasons do not exist anymore. Those reasons have not existed since the 70s. Work with me on this. The 70s was 50 years ago. Yes. So you do not do that anymore. You open the valve all the way to the end. Don't jam it open, but open it all the way till it stops. That's the way you scuba dive. So this particular issue can't happen. Okay, I hope there's something in there for you guys. I explained a little bit. If you have some more questions or some comments, keep them coming. I love them. All right. Take care. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce, Tech Tips.